Great. So good afternoon, everyone, once again, and thanks uh, for joining our webinar on SolidCAD CTC tools and better workflows. Today, we'll be concentrating on earthwork volume calculations. Accompanying me today, once again, is my colleague, Colin Cadet, one of our many tech consultants. And I am Ramil Laxman, an account manager, and both myself and Colin have been showcasing these civil enhancing tools, helping clients work better by spending less time on redundant, complex tasks civil 3D poses out of the box. Here's our agenda for today. We'll start with a brief intro of SolidCAD for those that are new to us and as to whom our partner CTC software are. We know that earthwork calculations done natively is laborious, confusing, tedious, and thus prone to errors. Updating your volumes as design changes is a pain, while labeling, tabling your results takes multiple hours, if not days, because it can only be done manually. It's just frustrating to deal with. Now with Earthworks processor, these are done for you. You can calculate complex site Earthworks using dynamic civil 3D surfaces, and automatically label, shade, table, or export your results to Excel. You can save your Earthworks test for easy repeating other projects or use as a template for future reference. Now we'll conclude at the end of the session with a Q&A session. Now Solicat has been your authorized KD reseller of Autodesk products for well over 25 years holding a platinum status, the highest bestowed upon a company. Now we merged with Cancel in 2017, forming one nationwide operation and rebranded as SolidCAD, a Cancel company. As one, we've continued in helping our clients with workflows and product solutions to keep them well ahead of the latest technological advancements. We specialize in industries in architecture, engineering, construction, civil infrastructure, manufacturing, and plant. Our training facilities and offices are located across the country. Our dedicated technical support team are on standby, ready to assist you at any given moment in all time zones and in both official languages. Albeit remotely, we have helped our clients nationwide by gradually providing, by continually providing our services through consultation, training, and implementation, just to name a few. We partnered with CTC since 2018, as they are at the forefront of advanced productivity tools and worldwide leaders for BIM. The Remember Autodesk Developer Network and has been making add-ons for Revit and Civil 3D since 2010. These tools are used by more than 40,000 users globally and in more than 75% of the top firms in the United States alone. SolidCAD's commitment to you by providing the industry leading solutions such as CTC has always been our focus. We pride ourselves with this belief and practice. So reach out to SolidCAD for your needs. We're here to help. With that, let's get started. I'll hand it over to Colin. Thanks for that introduction, Ramil. Now let's dive right into Site Earthworks. Uh, this is a workflow or this is a process that I've seen in a ton of different ways with a ton of different workflows. Um, some using Civil 3D, some not using Civil 3D. Um, and what I've seen from the different types of workflows that we've got is generally there's an inverse correlation between the time it takes to get those Earthworks quantities and the quality or the accuracy of those earthworks quantities. So today I want to show you the workflow that's going to get you the most accurate earthworks quantities and then we'll look at some ways to speed up that process. The most accurate way to do earthworks quantities is to be able to establish a number of different surfaces and subgrade boundaries and add all of this together to get one 
volume surface that's going to give you all of your earthworks quantities with different regions with different depths for sidewalks and asphalt and sod the issue with this is it is time consuming it we're creating six different surfaces we're creating a number of different boundaries and there's a lot of moving parts so we do have to be very careful um, and then when it comes to updating and things like that the updates can take a little bit longer, but this is the most accurate way to get Earthworks quantities on your sites or on your subdivisions. I'd like to flip into Civil 3D to explain this a little bit more. Here in Civil 3D, we've got a small site that we need the Earthworks for. Um, if we look in the Prospector tab, uh, we've got an EG surface and we've got all of the makings for a FG surface as well. With the shell of one here now last webinar we did we talked about the sim project suite and the auto grader tool this auto grader tool offers a dynamic connection between uh different feature lines based on uh, a parent feature line and at being able to establish the relationship to what we call child feature lines um, so right now i've got three different grading families that i'll just run all of one for the curbs one for the pond and one for the existing site tie-in. Um, and what this does is it creates a ton of different feature lines to establish this FG surface and then adds them all to that FG surface. Uh, the last thing I'll have to do here is just come down and add one more feature line to the FG surface because that's a sod area, southwest area that I want to calculate sod earthworks for as well, sod quantities. Just like that, we've got a full FG surface that I no longer need to see. Let's quickly clean up this drawing as well as I start to develop my regions for my earthworks quantities. I don't want to have to be worried about clicking in between all of these different areas. That's my exterior, this is my bottom, and that's gonna work perfectly right here. The next step in this is we're going to need to create Earthworks boundaries. This is usually for, for each of the regions, and usually this is done by either feature lines or polylines. Um, and then you can apply elevations to those feature lines or polylines, and then add them to a surface as break lines. And that surface is going to be your subgrade depths surface. So those are the depths in each of the different subgrade regions for a building versus uh, a parking asphalt area versus curbs or sidewalks. They're all going to have different subgrade depths. And we apply the boundary around that region. We give it the elevation of those depths. We then create a surface with all of those break lines in it. We can then take that depth surface with all of the break lines in it and compare it against the FG surface. That's going to get us our subgrade volume surface. And that subgrade volume surface will actually be at the perfect elevation that you're requiring for your subgrade surface. Now, we don't just want the elevations of our subgrade, we want the volumes of our subgrade. The issue with that is you can't compare an FG surface against a volume surface. So we take our subgrade volumes surface, we paste that into a regular tin surface, our regular subgrade surface, and then we compare subgrades versus FG, and that's gonna get us our earthworks quantities that we're looking for. This is the most accurate way to do things. Now let's look at how we can speed up that process. The very first thing is we need to identify each of these regions. Now, the easiest way to do this is a command that maybe not many of you know about. It's called line work shrink wrap. And as I type it in, it shows up in my command line. Line work shrink wrap. You want to make sure that you're on a designated layer for these boundaries and we'll execute that command. And what's cool about this command is you can select one piece of line work and it's going to shrink wrap that with a polyline on your current layer. 
you can also select multiple different pieces of line work and it'll do all of them at the same time. You can even select two pieces of line work that don't connect to each other and it will shrink wrap around them. This is probably the fastest way I can think of to create your line work or your, your subgrade region boundaries. I can then change my layer and re-execute that command for the building and for sod. We'll grab the feature line versus the feature line and create the sod boundary up there. Line work shrink wrap. We'll take this feature line compared to this feature line right here. Now, do be careful. There is one thing that I see right here, and if your line work doubles back on itself, it will create separate little enclosed areas. This is going to mess up some of your line work uh, if you're trying to grab things by layer because it's adding additional stuff to your layers that you don't actually want. Now, I can then get a little bit more creative, but with, with some of my regions here, but the next thing is all of these are going to be added as break lines to a surface. So there's two things that need to happen. One is I need to assign elevations to them. So if I select my polyline and select similar, well, I can take all of the ones on the asphalt layer and I can assign an elevation of maybe 0 0.45 and that's going to be my subgrade depth for asphalt areas. Then I can select all of my sod, right click, select similar, and my sod I really only need to take away 6 inches. and then so on and so forth. Now, the second issue in this is all of these are going to be added as break lines. And if you've worked with break lines before, you know that break lines don't do well sitting directly on top of each other. So we've got a really useful command in the Sim Project Suite. And before I jump into this, I'll jump back to the PowerPoint real quick just to talk about this. This is your Earthworks processor from the CTC SIM project suite. This is where we're going to deviate from the native way of doing things because it does all of the native way, just automates it all for you. It calculates all of your subgrade regions and everything like that all in one handy interface and then it actually labels it. You can export tables, you can place tables in Civil 3D. It's so much more efficient than having to do all of this by yourself. And on top of that, it makes iterations that much easier because as your site changes, your FG changes, all of your Earthworks quantities are also going to change. This is the interface that it looks like. So we define an Earthworks set. We then assign the proposed and existing surfaces. We manually select or, or select via a filter all of your subgrade regions that we were just creating. Um, and then you can set things like your stripping depth and that all in this interface. You click run and it creates six different surfaces for you uh, to calculate all of your site earthworks quantities. Now, in the latest release, we've actually added a separate tool here to help with creating those Earthworks regions back in Civil 3D. If I hit this offset regions command here, it will help me offset all of those closed regions so that I don't end up with break lines on top of break lines when I add them all to a surface. I can specify my offset distance, inward, outward, left or right. Well, I want it inward. and what layers are they sitting on? Well, what's cool about this is I can actually pick that from the drawing and auto populate. Now they're not all sitting on there. So I can add a wildcard character. 
and then we can refresh to see how many that we actually have. When I click OK, it's going to jump through here and actually offset all of these areas for me. So I'm not going to run into break lines crossing each other. They've offset nicely. Then I may just need to do some manual offsets in here to get the boundary for the sidewalk areas and then the exterior boundary or the interior boundary, I guess, for the asphalt areas. Instead, what I'm going to do is just quickly skip to the next drawing right here with all of my site regions created. Flipping to this drawing for a little bit of time savings, just because if you zoom in, we've grabbed all of these different regions. I've used some trimming and things like that to get our nice sidewalk area here. I've got a couple different offsets. So I've got the sidewalk region boundary set at its own elevations. We've got the asphalt region boundaries set at their own elevations and everything like that. At this point, I could take all of these different region boundaries and then create a surface and add all of these region boundaries to that surface as break lines because they're all offset from each other so there won't be any crossing break lines and this will create my depths surface now then i've explained the process where you compare that depth surface against your fg and that's going to get you subgrade elevations uh, and so on and so forth i could do that all manually but it would take me the better part of an hour and a half probably to get all of that in nice and perfectly instead let's use the earthworks processor calculate earthworks it's going to do all of that for me and as we get into this there's nothing proprietary that's really created in here um, if i go to the options this is where i can set things like my default stripping depth uh, to 0.15 but if you look at the surface creation, it's actually creating the six different surfaces that we've talked about. Two surfaces for the stripping depths and four different surfaces to get me my final earthworks quantities that I'm looking for. All of these are just regular civil 3D surfaces. It's just doing it in the background for you to save you some time. And then notice in the options, we also have labeling and reporting, which we'll get into a little bit later. We'll click OK. Now, to start this all off, we have to create an Earthworks set. Hit the green plus, and we'll call this our site. Call it our site Earthworks. Now, we have a proposed surface. That would be our building site FG. We have an existing surface. We also have all of these subgrade regions that we've selected. Now, we can select them individually that's going to be more time consuming. So we've got this filter option in actually a lot of the CTC tools, where if you hit the little ellipse, you can filter by layer, description, name, style, site. Well, if I don't know the layers, again, just like the last little offset tool that we used, if I select it, it's gonna auto populate that layer for me and I can then use wildcard characters, a little asterisk to grab more than one layer. When I click OK, all of my Earthworks regions populate for me. Notice as well, the subgrade depths are all read from the elevations that were set on those polylines. Um, it'll grab feature lines as well, and it'll take those elevations as well. If they vary, it's just going to say varies here. At any point, you can kind of check this off and change that subgrade depth automatically or manually sorry we've got a stripping depth auto populated here and we've got labeling options and things like that this is all that we needed to do it's going to grab all of these subgrade regions for the different subgrade region depths and when i click run it's not going to look like much because i've got all of my surfaces on a no display but in the background it's calculating all of this and it's producing a net cut of 7,000. Now let's 
then we can go select this site or this sorry earthworks set and we can actually export that so we can export those values to a AutoCAD table or to Excel directly. Let's just dump it in as an Excel table right now and look at some of the stuff that we've done here. If we look in our prospector tab, um, it's used some native functionality to just hide all of these site earthworks surfaces inside of a little folder. So if you right click on surfaces, you can create a folder, call this my FG folder, maybe. Um, I could then just simply drag my FG surface in there. That just helps with organizing. But in my site earthworks folder, if I open this up, it's named a number of different surfaces for me. My depth surface that we've talked about. And if we look at this in the, sub, in the surface properties, it's added a whole bunch of break lines. The next step, what did we talk about? Well, we then talked about the subgrade volume surface using that depth surface compared to the FG. So if we go into the definitions of this surface, we can see that we've compared the building FG surface to the site Earthworks depth surface. It's doing all of this stuff behind the scenes for you just in a faster way than what you can do it manually. It's then put a small label right here that we have complete control over kind of the formatting and things like that. Notice it's showing it in cubic yards for some reason. So we'll go back and take a look at why that is. And then we've also got a chart here. Now this chart again is showing in cubic yards. So let's delete this AutoCAD table and go back into Earthworks processor. If we open this up, we can still see that we've got our Earthworks calculations here. But in the options, we're able to go and adjust some of that reporting. If you want to see what's in the table, you hit the three, the three dots, the ellipse right here. And you can see that I've got the name, proposed, existing, subgrade depths. Um, maybe I want the area in there as well. And now all of those are contained in this little list right here. So I maybe I want this area up right here, just below existing. Now proposed, maybe that's a little vague. So if I double click on it, I can put pro proposed surface. And I can do the same for existing. As you get different columns that require a little bit more customization, something like area, you don't just get the name of the column. You also get the units that it's shown in. So meters, the precision and rounding options as well. So you can really have some granular control over how each one of these looks. We don't want feet. We want meters at two decimal places. Okay. Cut again, cubic meters two decimal places and so on and so forth. So we have really granular control over each column in the table and what columns are actually shown, whether there's a suffix in here or other options for our net stripping volume. Again, cubic meters. There we go. And now that we've somewhat adjusted these these tables. Let's click OK. We'll grab our Earthworks set and we'll create a table again to see how this has changed. We can see that we've updated some of the table headings or the column headings. We can see that we've got the area in cube or in square meters, meters, everything's looking nice. Now, what happens if our design changes? What happens if I'll turn this back on and just freeze the grid surface? Maybe our pond doesn't have enough capacity. So I can take this pond, I'll extend it a little bit. But now the pond doesn't 
there's a weird stretch right here. So rather than moving each one of these, it's really simple. Just go back and run AutoGrader. We can open up AutoGrader. We find the pond family, and we'd like to reestablish this feature line association. So we'll run that, and it reestablishes it for us. But now the FG surface has changed. So our Earthworks quantities are then out of date. We're going to have different Earthworks quantities than the 7,000. So let's go back into Earthworks processor. Notice it's out of date, and we just have to rerun the Earthworks quantities. And now we're left with 7,300. Now the table is just a simple AutoCAD table. It doesn't update by itself. So we will have to re-add the table. But instead of doing that, let's maybe try exporting that to Excel this time. We'll export it to Excel and open it up here to see what it looks like. And this is so much faster than having to jump in and edit and pull out every single region and then do some of the calculations and getting the earthworks quantities, it dumps it right into Excel for you. All with the customized table headers and everything else that we set up in earthworks processor. Let's quickly get a better idea though of what surfaces and how they were actually created uh, happened in here. Uh, to do that, let's simply create a little line right here that we'll use as an alignment and just manually come back create an alignment from objects right here enter and sure and we'll use this as earthworks viz and that looks pretty good. Okay. Then using that, we'll create some surface profiles. Earthworks Viz, let's add existing site, FG. I would like to see the depths. I would like to see my stripping and my subgrade. That's a lot of stuff going on. Let's just add a couple different styles. So we've got FG that needs to sit on a design depths will be far down stripping. Let's leave that on layout and subgrades. Let's put that on a design as well. So we can compare draw it profile and dump that in over here. Now, what just happened? If we scroll down in here, this would be our depth surface. We've added a couple different regions in here with different elevations very close to zero. And this is the surface it's created. Now, if I scroll all the way to my correct elevations up here, we can start to see all of this take shape. I've got my existing surface followed by my stripping surface. And the stripping depth is going to be that 0.15. I've got my FG surface compared to my subgrade tin surface, which the subgrade volume surface was pasted into. And you can see that there's different depths in the different regions, and it respects all of that. So we've created six different surfaces automatically based one after the other or one off of the other and it's actually taken from the analysis tab i'm sure you you're used to seeing this before uh, doing things natively it's actually taken the volumes dashboard bound volumes and it's taken those bound volumes and that's what you're seeing inside of the excel or the the autocad table and those are the quantities that you're getting right here. So 
flipping back into the PowerPoint just to wrap things up. Um, we want to stay organized. You need to, and you've, you've noticed this throughout the webinar, I didn't just create different objects. I took the time to give them uh, specific names, specific layers, and things like that. The more organized we are, the easier it is for someone else to jump in and take over our project. The easier it is for you to go on vacation and, and leave a project because someone's able to pick up without losing time. We need to have an FG surface and an EG surface. Uh, either in the drawing or data shortcut in so that Earthworks processor can read that. Now, if you're looking on how to get faster with your FG surface, I'd check out the last uh, YouTube video that we created on the auto grader. Then we talked about these closed polylines or feature lines representing your desired boundaries for each of those different subgrade regions that have different subgrade depths. Your depth of excavation for a sidewalk is different than your depth of excavation for a sodded area. Then we can configure Earthworks processor and hit run. It's gonna do all of the manual process for us. And then if you need to update your design, update your FG and things like that, we can do that on the fly. We can add additional boundaries. We can manipulate boundaries. We can change the FG surface all of those different design changes will easily be updated in Earthworks Processor. And last but not least, always keep your volumes calculations in a separate drawing. There's a lot of surfaces, there's a lot of processing that goes into it, and you wanna make sure that you're not corrupting your design. That's why I'd definitely recommend using your data shortcuts to bring in your EG surface and your FG surface, and then doing your Earthworks calculations off of those data shortcut surfaces. Hopefully this offers uh, some clarity on how to create Earthworks volumes, but also offers you a better solution how to get them done a lot faster. We can use Earthworks processor for rough quantities as well, and then refine our design and get more accurate quantities as the design develops through iterations. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I'll pass this back off to Ramil to wrap things up. Great, thank you, Colin. Just gonna flip screens here. Um, so the floor is now open for your, so the floor is now open for your questions. Please uh, go ahead and type those in in the Q&A icon. Uh, just to know, our next session is on August 31st on road design using Solica CTC corridor mapper. Uh, this tool, uh, much like all our tools, will save you time by automating those repetitive tasks. Um, so corridor mapper will automatically assign corridor targets by mapping sub-assemblies to your layers, uh, styles, objects names, and even other sub-assemblies to create a dynamic link that will update the corridor as more targets are created. This tool will uh, replace the native target mapping dial box with a much more powerful option. Now, please let us know if a dedicated demo would be ideal to showcase all of our solid CAD CTC's workflow efficient tools. Just contact myself or Colin or connect with your account reps. We're more than happy to conduct a session with the entire CAD team and find solutions that pertain to your specific projects. So I don't see any questions coming in. With that, I would like to 